Okay, my name is Peter Rutter. Uh, I'm the founder and designer of PP Pedals, and this is my first prototype of the Stereo Climb Ball. It has quite a number of quirks that I am going to work out, but the good news is that like all of them, I've got a plan. I've got those details. I'm going to walk you through what it is right now, what those quirks are. For those of you who have backed the Indiegogo campaign to see where we are in the progress and to give you some updates along the way. So first, <coughs> I've got just it running direct um, stereo into the system. And I do want to show that this is a mono, obviously, guitar. But you're hearing it on both sides, not because um, like the I'm doing it on the mixing end, I'm s running stereo there, but because on the inside of this, I've switched the um, input switch to mono. And if I switch it to stereo, it's expecting the stereo input signal. And when I do that, uh, especially if I mute my mic so you don't hear my mic, which is mono, you only hear it on one side because it's, it's expecting a stereo and you've given it only one channel, so it's only going to one side. But if I switch it to mono, now it's going, okay, you're sending me a mono signal. Um, I'm going to send it to both halves of the, the signal. So that is true just all throughout. Anytime you send uh, or receive a signal, you can tell it, is this signal uh, supposed to be mono or stereo? And if it is stereo and you send it to mono, it'll just sum those two together. Um, and uh, if it's mono and then uh, you, um, you have a mono signal, but you want to send it to both sides of the stereo, so you select mono, it'll just copy, it'll just send the same thing to both sides. So anyway, um, uh, other than that, it's, it's got a lot of the same functionality as the um, first two versions of the Klein bottle. So you have your, uh, but with like things in a little bit of a different order. So first, there are three effects loops. All three of them have the same set of six controls that all Klein models have had. <coughs> You've got your pre-gain, how loud is it going into the effect. Mix, how loud is it going into the main mix. You've got your high pass filter, which is uh, rolling off low frequencies. Your low pass filter, which is rolling off high frequencies. These are not resonant filters, they are passive filters. So they're just roll-offs. They're meant to be bandwidth limiters, so you can decide, well, I only want like the highs on this part of the, you know, having this effect on them, or you know, pushing the mids into this overdrive circuit, or whatever that you want to do there. If you leave them all the way open, it's not flat from like 20 to 20 kilohertz or anything like that, but it's got quite a range. I want to say the roll-off frequency on the low end is 47, 33. I, you know what? I, I should. I should know what it is, but I, I don't. It's, it's down there. Um, and on the upper end, uh, it, it, it is getting closer to that 20 kilohertz um, range on the upper end. So it's quite uh, uh, w a wide frequency range when you open it all the way up. OK, and then you have these loop controls. So this, uh, these loops control how much of the output of this uh, effects loop goes into the other effects loops. So this sends. Uh, this effects loop to loop two, and then to loop three, and this one has loop one and loop three, you know, because it's loop two, it doesn't send back to itself, um, and so on. So you can have them kind of cycling between each other, and uh, we'll hear a little bit of that. Now, this demo is not meant to be like, oh, here's exactly what it's going to sound like, because um, one, I don't have the like chops to show you everything that this could do, uh, or time. It's more like, here's the progress that I've made on this stereo client model. So there's just an overview of those controls. The controls that um, have been on uh, one or the other, uh, so version one had um, these slope switches, these 6 to 12 dB slope switches. They're for the filters, and they're how aggressive that filter is. So 6 dB per octave is a really gentle filter, and 12 dB is a more aggressive one. Version two did not have this switch. It was only 12 dB all the time. Okay, the version one did have this switch. Version 1 did not have a phase inversion switch on every channel. This is really vital for mixing effects because one of them might be inverted. Uh, the effect itself might be inverting the signal, and so you need to correct that. Um, and so version 1 had one phase control for one loop, just in case there was that issue. Um, but this, to make it more convenient, version 2 had it for all of them. So th and this does as well, except for now it's a stereo phase inversion, so it inverts both sides. And then both of them had this trail switch 
which uh, allows you to dictate what happens when you turn off the effect, uh, what is still remaining connected in the circuit, even if the effect is off. Um, but what's different, and I'll explain that in a second, what's different now is instead of having one master switch for the whole pedal, it's per loop. But I've put them close enough together that if you did want to just switch them all to one side, it's not too hard. So first, I want to let you know that the, uh, one of the quirks is that the, what's printed here is actually a reverse of what is happening. So we've got the S and the M, but they're in reverse. So when I switch it to the S, I'm really switching to the M. Here's what the S and M means. If I switch to the S position, uh, which in this case I'd have to switch to the right, uh, that means now loop two here, it can talk, it's, it's loop sends can talk to the other loops even if it's turned off. Um, and so uh, you can have them all talk to each other even with all the loops turned off so that you can turn on one effect and interact with the other if you wanted to. The other side, the M side, which again, the text is backwards. Now it doesn't just talk, it does talk to all the loops, but it also feeds its output into the main mix so you can hear what's coming out. All that's turned off now when this uh, foot switch is off is that it's not receiving the signal from directly from the instrument that's on the input. It's not receiving this signal. It's receiving signal from all the loops, and it's sending a signal on the output, but it's not receiving any input signal uh, when it's turned off. <coughs> and then what's in the middle position, it, when it's turned off, it's off. It's not talking to any other loop. It's not talking to the mix. You've completely cut it off. And so that's what those uh, switches do. Okay, and then the only, only control here that is completely brand new uh, is this pre-post switch, which takes these filters as a common request to take these filters and make them, they were before the loop, and now you can switch them to after the loop, okay? And so uh, I can take these filters and have them be filtered. It's actually between the, the return of the loop when it comes back in, but before uh, the feedback. So it still gets filtered before it goes out to another circuit. So you can have this filtering happening in a loop kind of thing. Um, and so there you go. That's a, that's a new feature. This Adding this was complicated for mono. To do it for stereo required a massive amount of circuitry. In fact, probably two-thirds of the circuitry that you see when I flip over the back pedal is just dedicated to these three switches to making those work. It's a big undertaking. <coughs> but uh, it works. Now, uh, again, I said it's not a demo. I'm not going to show you like, oh, here's how you can do this or that or whatever. What I do want to tell you is about my progress. So here's the progress. First, I mean, this functionally works. Like, it, all those controls do those things. Um, but there are a number of quirks that I'm st uh, still working out. So let's go through them one by one, and I'll show you them. So first, we turn this on. This is connected to a delay. Um, one, you hear that pop. Uh, that's a bit of a quirk from just the build. Like if I do the other ones, like there isn't that same level of a problem here of a, like a switching pop. There is a little bit and so I'm going to do something to take that out. So I think this is part of the uh, issue with the build, meaning that there's a short because I was doing all these things by hand and having to hack some fixes that I had to hack in uh, that I won't have to hack in before. Anyway, so, so that's, that's one quirk. Um, but uh, I'll get that worked out. So. so there's my stereo delay. I got the dry signal in. If I take this out, it's just the effect pedal. So I'll turn that up and give you a little more. Okay, so there's that stereo effect, which is awesome to see in a Klein bottle. Just the fact, I mean, it's obviously a stereo effect, but now I know I can like mix and interact with that all over the place. Um, <coughs> so one quirk is that if I put it in, uh, there's a pre-gain circuit um, prior to, basically it goes a buffer, and then that buffer gets split out, um, that buffer stage gets split out so that you have your dry signal to hear. But then after um, that splitting out, there's a gain stage before it goes into the loops. That gain stage used to be inside of the loops, and I took it out of the loops in order to do pre-post. In the original Klein bottle, I had three trim pots to adjust the pre-gain for all three of them. Well, if I had done that here, I would have six trim pots, and it gets weird with pre post It was going to be complicated. So I just made it right after that input stage, this gain stage. Well, <laughs> the problem was is that when I designed the circuit, 
Um, I made the pre-gain, uh, this pre-gain filter mode tap into that gain stage, but not the post. And so you'll see, as soon as I do it to post, it's still there. Look at how much quieter that is because it's going through all these attenuation circuits, these filter circuits, these are attenuation circuits. And so you have all these attenuation circuits and very little gain added, and so it's just a lot quieter. That's, that's already fixed on the circuit board. It's just to fix it physically on this board until they order a new one is like so many, it's a quad layer board, like it's basically impossible. So um, and maybe it's technically possible, it would take way more time than I have right now. It would be faster to just fix it quickly in the board uh, and order a new one. That's what I'm going to do. So I know where the issue is. I know why it's so much quieter. Yeah, so it's not a problem. Okay, let me go back to pre. Um, also, you notice that one just switches a lot louder. If I do this, same thing here. See how much quieter it is. Like, but that switch scene is not popping. So again, there's some uh, issue here um, that's going to be uh, easy to solve or whatever, but it's, it's specific to this. It's not specific to the design. Um, <coughs> and then, uh, so these you know, work as they did in version one. Th that's all functional. So the phase switch, the slope switch, those are working great. Oh, <laughs> there is one other giant quirk, which I've already fixed again in the design. Just got to reorder the boards. You notice that these pedals are upside down. That's because I, th what's marked, what's printed here that says return, says return, is actually the send. Like somehow, because the circuit board, when I made it was backwards, I flipped those around. I usually know that, like I've designed enough pedals to know I'm looking at the backwards of the front. Somehow I just did not catch that. Um, and I'm trying to think of any other like major quirks to point out. There's that being too low of volume. This is gotten fixed. There was a quirk on the circuit board, but I've modified that circuit board for here and I've already updated it where these were working in reverse. I've got that fixed now. They're working fine. Um, yeah, uh, if I flip this over, I want to show you what's on the back and how this works. Here, oh, here's some of the other quirks that I'm uh, working out right now. I'm working out on, on getting better connections between these boards so it's a little less cumbersome. And actually, this can like easily pop out. This is just for prototype. Make it a little easier, the wiring um, to go in. Here we've got our uh, impedance trim pots and our gain trim pots. And then down here, there's actually LED brightness trim pots. So I don't know, I, maybe I can get it to go vertical to make it easier to be accessible. Anyway, I'm going to be looking at the accessibility and the ease of build here, and also with the switches. So you've got your stereo mono switches. Right now you have to kind of like fit your finger under here. And, and while you can, even if you've got a stubby finger, you can feel it. It's not as obvious. I'm going to see if there's room up top to put it up top. Um, and so it's just kind of the physical layout uh, here that I'm still working with. Okay, let me know if you have any questions, but that's where I'm at right now. It's like, it's, uh, it's definitely got its quirks, but all those quirks are, are not going to be that super hard to, to fix and figure out. In fact, the hardest thing right now is, is getting to, uh, is going to be updating that layout, making it just right so that it's easy to use, easy to build. The faster it is to build, the lower I can keep the price, you know, because it takes me less time. Um, and that, and so then there's one other thing that I wrote in the email as an update change is that I um, am going to have to do more uh, hand soldering myself on some of this. So my, my initial goal was to get the pots and toggle switches like already soldered to the circuit board so I can just slide it into place, screw everything on, and then solder the connections between things. Um, because if, if I was ready like to, to send it off right now for uh, final manufacturing, then I, I would probably just go ahead and do that and get that soldered in. Um, but because I'm not, in, it's going to take me a month to get the next version of these circuit boards and you know those kind of things. By the time I got everything, everything might be subject to some uh, significantly higher tariffs. That's just the reality of um, what the incoming administration has like pledged that they will do. 
And so I don't want to put myself in a position where I might suddenly have to charge a lot more or not be able to like import the goods that I already paid for. Um, so I want to make sure that uh, I'm doing that. Because uh, once you add in the cost of, of those tariffs plus the cost of paying someone else um, to assemble all those things, it kind of, it's one of those things where it might be a wash. So the overall final retail price will probably go up $50 than what it is on the website right now. Um, but I'm not going to make that change until I do more calculations, you know, probably early January. Um, so anyway, let me know if you have any questions. Again, I wasn't trying to like showcase this. I guess it would be fun to to play something. Sure, why not? Oh, that was the other quirk. Yeah, I found it. Um, so uh, there's this heterodyning issue where we have two charge pumps. They're running at 500 kilohertz. You can't hear 500 kilohertz but they don't run perfectly at the same kilohertz. And so you're hearing that whine is the difference. And so um, I already know what to do. I just can't hack it in this board because the, the chip is so tiny. Uh, to add a resistor to uh, that network that controls the frequency so that the f their frequency distance uh, from each other is more controllable and much further apart, like 150 kilohertz apart. Um, that way you would never you can't hear those frequencies, 350 and 500, and you can't hear their difference either. So, like you're hearing right now. <laughs> yeah, I've got my distortion over. The distortion's on the, like, the delay and reverb. Because the distortion's not on right now, so the, the guitar itself is clean but the delay is distorted. So that's fun. Let me turn some stuff down here. And other things up. make the reverbs brighter, the delays darker. Okay, let me know if you have any questions. I'm still on a, t a timetable to get full production by the summer and um, ideally still April for that first batch of 25.